this should be the way in. Cool. Ugh, the scrapes. Let's do it. Actually, I think before we do it, let's have a look at these. I feel like I'll finish up on this. Because when I stun enemies, I've been I've been trying to get the extra hit in as well. Silent strikes, right, 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 right leader strike. Mm. Then again, I don't know how many silent strikes I'm gonna get in while I'm in the cauldron. Craft additional ammo from the same amount of resources. I think I'll do this for now. I really feel like there's not gonna be a lot of silent strike action going on here. As usual, I forgot about these boxes. I'm doing it like this so I can quickly kind of see what I'm getting as well. I think I'll change this one for this one. Make the sling even more powerful. And... Yeah, I don't think I've got anything better than those anyway. Okay. Find the hidden entrance. Alright, plenty of everything. This is looking like a more classical cauldron. Albeit a more frozen one, I think. Right then. Hmm. I wonder what we're dealing with this time. Very icy. Save these for the trail. Calm before the storm. With these, I always think, yeah, I can backtrack to these if I get injured badly and I need a few more plants, but it tends to be structured in a way where you can't always backtrack to those, so we'll have to see. Because there's a good, like, 100%, well, 75% worth of health there if I need it. They're really giving you plenty, man. So yeah, I don't know if, again, this is a point of no return. I think you can. Yeah, okay, good. Fine. That's a good sign. Alright, let's see what awaits. Straight off the bat, Thunderjaw. Woohoo! I guess again, if we've got the aerial advantage here, I'm gonna. Oh, really? This one's just straight in. Ah, okay, that's a shame. Hmm. That's not what I was expecting to happen, but fair enough. Now, let me get a good look at this. These big bits—they're easy to dislauncher. I've got to try and tear those off as soon as possible. I think that's what I did last time. And the radar. Then there's the bits on the front. 
just says body, but I don't think that's what it is. Cannon. Yeah, I think a lot of tear blast arrow action is going to need to happen again here. I think I'll probably do what I tried to do last time. And override the two watchers. Oh, really? Every freaking time. I don't think I've successfully managed to override the watchers at all. <laughs> I literally just want to trigger up a battle where I've got two watchers on my side just to see how much of a nuisance they'll be to the Thunderjaw. That's what I'm curious about, but it's not going to happen. So pretty much everything is weak to tear, so if I can just get that tear blast action, I'll be fine. Screw it, I'm going to do the same thing I always do, which is fail to take these out. There we go. Okay. I think I remember the corrupted one being weak to fire, but I've not seen a fire weakness in this one. This freeze. Okay. Plenty of medicinal stuff around here. It's just going to be lots of tear blast arrow and run at the start. Let's see how much I can debilitate it. I don't know if it's one of these cauldrons that's going to be backwards as in we're going to take this thing out and that's going to kind of be the start of it. We're still going to have other stuff to do or it's just one big battle and that's it. I'd be a bit disappointed if it was, I'm not going to lie, considering how good the third one was. Okay, I think I'm about as ready as I'll ever be. Um, in terms of... In terms of armor, I don't know, like, outfit, what I should wear. And I'll resist against ranged attacks as well, maybe. So we'll try putting this on. Right. Okay. Let the fun begin. Because it's such an enclosed space and there's nowhere to hide, this could be more difficult than the previous one. Get rid of them. Ooh, ooh. Get rid of them components. I went all in on the this launcher thing. I feel like I dodged that one. Seriously. There you go, that's gone. I want to get that gun, but that's going to happen. Yeah. 
This is the kind of place where it's so big that when it charges you, you're not going to have a lot you can do. Alright, that's a good one. Yeah, so as you can see, every time it charges, you got to be like really ready for it, otherwise... Yeah, every time. I feel like it's out of ammo, right? Oh wait, no. It's not out of ammo, okay. I forgot, obviously, it had two disc launchers. Yeah, okay. Alright, dude. Just gotta try and... Come on! No, there's no prompt! And I got almost got damage for it. There we go. Alright, hang in there. Okay, get this launcher now. Fuck. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. So yeah, the Thunder Jaw definitely does seem to be very much a like you just got to dismantle it with the tear blast arrows. You take away the disc launchers, you take away the radar thing on the top. I guess you can try and take away the tail, but that seems quite difficult. But in general, in the two battles I've had against it, including the corrupted one, it seems to work well. But this looked, this motherfucker, man. Look at this. That's some bullshit. That could have caused me some big damage. Too bad. Now I'm curious about whether this cauldron really is over or if there's still more to do. Two down. Oh man. That's some good coils. Okay. Now. Let's override the central bit. I mean, if we can override Thunder Jaws, that's pretty insane. Okay, really looks like that was it. I guess maybe if I came in here earlier, like 10-15 levels earlier, then it would have been... Just this one battle would have been enough. Probably would have taken multiple multiple goes. So, uh, Hephaestus is the source of the cauldron data intrusions? It's been forcing cauldrons to make aggressive machines. Deadlier and deadlier year by year. That's some interesting lore. Main production, external override, downloading, blah, blah, blah. Armament enhance. Hmm. Diagnostic slash worm.nxt. Intrusion detects successful trace result, Hephaestus. In encroachment threat, human. Fauna threat, high. Rocket high. Biosphere threat, high. Direct of cull. Production override initiated. All other priorities rescinded. Wow. Interesting. I kind of wish that there was a like a, a text thing to to sum it up, like an expanded version of what Aloy just said. Why? And what? Or who is Hephaestus? 
Another mystery to add to the list. I don't know if we find out in the, in the next part of the story, or that's some other piece of lore, but we'll see. Anyway, that was a short and sweet cauldron. Now, we are back to Deep Secrets of the Earth. So this is why I said I'd complete the story with, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So, I think I can just travel here and get going. Let's do it. It's awfully silent here. All right, I'm just going to head to where the storyline thing is, and we're going to proceed and see how much more we got. I don't know if it's like an hour more or if we've got like three more hours. Time will tell. Don't start thinking you're welcome here. You're only tolerated. Rude. Now Edaman's been snatched away? What's the deal with this place? You'll not catch me outside Sunfall. Nothing but a bunch of anger machines out there. Where's Dr. Meridian? I'll bet he's eating well now. I don't know what's going to happen to these guys now that these angrier machines are gone. Caring about or Avad's doing. The sun won't abide apostasy. I'll come back later. That also. woman said to meet her at a green tent down in the camp. Might be worth a visit. Really? I remember that. I'm literally going to fast travel here just so I can potentially meet her and come bothered with trying to climb up and down and find the right exit. Well, there was talk of a green tent and I thought maybe I'll come down here, but... I've not He's found one. To it all look the same to me. I mean, I guess this is a green tent. Okay, I've had a look around the camp and I definitely can't find anyone. So that whole, that thing that Aloy said, I'm not really sure what she's trying to reference there because I can't find anyone related to that. So I'm just going to head back up. I've checked everywhere, including the green looking tent as well. But nothing. Okay, here we go again. I remember screwing that up last time, which was nice. So I'm supposed to climb higher, or. I think we go lower. Yes, this was the place. The point of no return. Let's do it. Not right now. What? I'm heading down. I've spent a lifetime trying to uncover the secrets of this world. Where the machines came from. How the old ones achieved such marvels only to fall into silence and death. A lifetime of failure. As year by year, decade after decade, I hit walls I could not break, doors I could never breach. Hello. Until a Nora Huntress marched out of the savage east. And, voila, for her, all the deepest secrets of the earth were laid bare. I suspect you will have an easier time with this door than I did years ago. Hold for identiscan. Genetic profile confirmed. Entry authorized. Malfunction. 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 Are you, kidding me? you don't hear me laughing. Shut up. There's gotta be another way. Hey! Elizabeth Sobek here! Requesting access! Access request acknowledged. Root command functions available. Do you wish to proceed? I do! Get me through this door! Analyzing. Primary access inoperable due to mechanical failure. Emergency venting procedure likely to circumvent blockage. Do you wish to proceed? Yes. 
Emergency venting authorized. everything that will draw attention we won't have this place to ourselves for long now we last i checked i was the one whisking my life down here yes fine now will you please get moving there's so much to learn in less time than i'd hoped here we go explore the project zero dawn facility welcome to project zero dawn Zero Dawn. We found it. Are you really so surprised? Facility diagnostics detect multiple failures. Attempting repair. So, what was this room? An entrance hall, perhaps. Have a look around. Yeah, there's going to be lots to see and lots to listen to. Hopefully not a lot to read. I'd rather these are audio. Considering they're going to be obviously very important. But, of course, the first one is the reading one. So, here we go. From Lounge Staff to Admin. Subject, another incident. This morning's unfortunate incident with Dr. Popovich is another reason of reception's need for additional support. We appreciate that Zero Dawn is an immensely complicated project. But as the staff who serve on the front line, we're tired of being neglected. As we have already requested, we need human translators, fluent in Polish, for example. Security staff who can subdue enraged embryologists, for example, and dermal sedatives to calm persons who are screaming in Polish while hurling chairs and vases at reception staff, for example. Yes, most of the candidates are reasonably calm and well-behaved, but we need help handling the exceptions to that rule. Please respond. So yeah, for me, the most interesting thing about this whole business, obviously the whole the embryo business. That's, that's got to be like the most interesting part of this whole situation. So there's a few data points that I think, for whatever reason, I haven't read, so I guess now that we're in a reading vibe, I think we probably should because these are relevant too. So, Faro Automated Solutions is an American multinational corporate entity that produces robots for all walks of life, though its core business consists of military and defense contracts. As of 2063, FAS has ranked number one among the Fortune 5 by gross revenue and profit for 10 years in a row, a world record. Founded in 2033 by Theodore Ted Farrow, an entrepreneur from Salt Lake City, Utah, the company has developed several promising robot prototypes in its early years, but failed to break into markets dominated by then-industry giants like General Synthetics and Recall. This changed in 2038 with the debut of the Alfred line of levitating personal servitors, which generated exceptional sales, lifting the company onto the Fortune 50 for the first time. Profits tripled in, their tw in the 2040s as the company's environmental efforts led by famed engineer Elizabeth Sobeck, catapulted fast to the head of that sector. In 2049, in the wake of successful green and climate cleanup efforts around the globe, worldwide approval ratings of FAS exceeded 90% and founder Ted Farrow was hailed across media and social networks as the man who saved the world. Yet it was the emergence of FAS as a military contractor in the late 2040s that cemented its status as the world's wealthiest corporation, with a record market capitalization of over $23 trillion. By 2055, FAST controls 61% of the market share for automated military platforms, holding contracts with 353 nations, transgovernmental organizations and corporate entities. Today, its holdings exceed the second largest global corporation, FB Mobihel Global, by 321%. So that's some more data about FAST and Ted Farrow himself. Theodore Ted Farrow, born December 24, 2013, I wonder if that's when development officially starts in this game, is an American entrepreneur and business magnate. He is the founder of Farrow Automated Solutions, the largest corporation of all time, and the world's wealthiest individual, and the first ever trillionaire. Born and raised in Salt Lake City, Utah, he enrolled at the University of California, Los Angeles, where he studied business for two years before dropping out in 2033 to start fast. Typical, like, young billionaire, trillionaire kind of story. Though it struggled at first, the company broke through at the end of the troubled 2030s with its popular lines of personal servitors and bodyguard bots, 
then exploded when his famous line of green robots led the race to solve the climate crisis during the 2040s clawback. At the end of that decade, FAS opened a military defense branch, dominating the world market for automated military platforms by 2053. The success of FAS has made Mr. Farrow the world's best-known businessman, one of its most sought-after speakers, and a major voice in politics, culture, and international affairs. So he's like the, the final form of Elon Musk or something. So there we go. One of many things we're going to be reading, probably. But Project Zero Dawn. This is more reading. God damn it. Okay. Reception staff to admin. We need support too. Reception staff continues to require additional support managing ZD candidates when they arrive at the facility. Many are frightened or confused. Some are highly agitated. These are not the sort of persons who are accustomed to having information withheld from them. At minimum, we need human translators. The Langbots are not sufficient. And mild sedatives with extreme so it's the same thing again. And all support will be welcome, blah de blah de blah. Now I could swear we watched these Oh, okay. Right, okay. So these like transcripts are the ones that we saw, I think, during the story. Fair. Um, I think there was only two in this room. And the medicinal omens are appearing as well. Saving these for the trail. Take a seat and wait for your name to be called. <laughs> a selection of beverages and snacks are available. In a smaller room. I feel like any minute we're gonna hear Glado say, Welcome to the testing center. It's got that kind of vibe. Soundproofing. Would it be possible to improve the soundproofing between VR1 and the lounge area? Most of the candidates stay quiet during the presentation. But the ones who scream or sob can be plainly heard by candidates waiting their turn in the lounge. Just a thought. The ones who scream or sob. <laughs> yeah. Just what did Elizabeth Sobeck propose? I mean, like I mentioned before, I guess on the one hand, the fact that... Please proceed into viewing room one for an important message. Regarding the purpose of your visit. There we go. I mean, given the fact that humanity still exists, at least in one form or another, leads me to think that what she did ultimately worked and saved humanity. But I guess the whole thing is going to be like, was there another way? She doesn't seem like the kind of person that would do something like that, just like with bad intentions. So I don't know. No room. Answers are coming. For the fifth time, please restock the lounge's selection of herbal teas. If I have to listen to one more egghead throw a tantrum because we're out of organic cucumber mint or blackberry sage varietals, I'm going to lose it. Please respond. And this time, no tempest in a teapot or steep demand jokes, okay? <sighs> okay. Cucumber mint tea, huh? <laughs> I mean, I guess I don't have it that bad in here. They're so having all these fancy teas. It's, it's a little bit frustrating because my throat is like 80-90% good, but all this like back-to-back -back reading is definitely wearing it out quicker than it should be. <laughs> Trying to stay as hydrated as I can. Because I was feeling like I was feeling 100% when I started the session. But I probably wasn't expecting this much reading. 